Hollywood, USA. Here, at the famous Hollywood Canteen in downtown Los Angeles, movie stars are banding together to do their share for the war effort, entertaining America's brave servicemen before they ship overseas. Glamorous actresses like Linda Darnell can often be found serving up a warm meal and in the spirit Gosh, of Gosh, Linda Darnell has the most beautiful smile. And she has the prettiest hair. Miss Campbell's hair is much prettier. And it's naturally curly. Molly McIntyre, that's the silliest thing I've ever heard. It's a perm. It's natural. And on another continent, the Queen of England proudly watches as the future queen, Princess Elizabeth, with her sister, Princess Margaret Rose, sets out for her first official review of the Grenadier. Who do you like better, Princess Elizabeth or Princess Margaret Rose? Margaret Rose. Elizabeth. If I were a princess, I'd have such elegant tea parties. That's a brilliant idea, Linda. What? A tea party. That's what I'll do for my birthday. Shh. <laughs> that was swell. Judy and Mickey are the perfect couple. Not nearly as perfect as Miss Campbell and her fiance. Ah, oh, he's so handsome. You've met him? You've met Lieutenant Tom Davies? Not in person, but I did see his picture. You didn't? Where? In Miss Campbell's desk drawer. He snooped in her desk? No. Last week, when we had the air raid drill, my job was to turn out the lights, so I was the last one to leave the classroom. And her drawer was open with his picture sticking out. Oh, you're so lucky. <laughs> I bet he looks like Jimmy Stewart. More like Tyrone Power. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what can I get you girls? I uh, will have the usual Billy, a large hot fudge sundae with extra nuts and three spoons. Sorry, girls, there's no ice cream today. <laughs> no ice cream? That's impossible. Things can change overnight in wartime. But ice cream, that's just too much. Come on, girls, we have to do our part for the war effort. I'll have a cherry cola, please. Me too. Same here. Three cc's. Oh my gosh. What? Don't look behind you. I told you not to look. It's Miss Campbell. Who's she with? Is that? Her fiance. Golly. He's even handsomer in real life. Don't start. Try to. There you go. And I got some extra cherries for you girls. Thanks, Thanks Billy. Billy. I wonder what they're talking about. It's the wedding, of course. Oh, Lieutenant Davies, my darling. How many bridesmaids should we have? She wouldn't call him Lieutenant Davies. They're engaged, for Pete's sake. Oh, Tom, my darling. We should have three bridesmaids. My favorite students, Linda, Susan, and that enchanting Molly. What's the... Molly McIntyre. I think you have a future in the theater. May I introduce my fiance, Tom Davies? Ladies? Yikes. <laughs> And I didn't know why Linda was making such silly faces at me. And then Miss Campbell came over with her fiance, Lieutenant Tom Davies. He's a dreamboat. I'm such a child. I wasn't talking to you, Jill. He's in the Air Force, Dad. I bet he's awfully brave. Davies. I think I took his appendix out when he was about Jill's age. He certainly was brave back then. An officer in the Air Force? Gosh, he's lucky. I wish I was old enough to join up. Well, you're not, Ricky, for which I'm thankful. That's not very patriotic of you, Mom. Well, I suppose it isn't, dear. But each time I pass by Mrs. Guilford's window and see that blue star, I imagine how worried she must be about her Johnny. It's hard for me to think of Johnny Guilford as a Marine. Seems like just yesterday he was our paper boy. Never missed a puddle. The boy's off doing his duty for his country. Well, let's hope his aim's improved. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's see now. Isn't it someone's birthday very soon? Oh, yes, and I have the best idea. I'd like to have a royalty party this year, like Princess Elizabeth and Princess Margaret Rose. Everyone has to get dressed up in fancy clothes, and Molly, then... dear, we just don't have the rations for a big birthday party. She's simply too young to understand sacrifice, Mother. I am not. Nonsense. She's going to be 10 years old. She understands perfectly. Don't you, dear? 
Yes, ma'am. Um, thanks for supper. May I please be excused? Yeah, of course. Look, I was thinking. Now, it might not be as exciting as a royal tea party, but maybe I could take you out for a special day. Just you and me? Had a lovely weekend, boys and girls. I certainly did. We have an exciting week of learning about the world ahead of us. Today, we are going to learn about England. England is the largest. She's looking especially pretty today. That color gray suits her. I bet Lieutenant Davies gave her those pearls. The other countries are Northern Ireland. I love Scotland, the way her engagement ring glitters in the light. England is one of the great industrial and trading nations of the world. That's such a beautiful diamond. Lieutenant Davies must be rich. Handsome, Molly brave, and rich. Could you perfect. name the capital city of England? Molly? Yes, Miss Campbell? I asked you a question. Sorry, Miss Campbell. I didn't hear. I wonder if anyone else heard me. Yes, Allison. Miss Campbell, you asked Molly to name the capital city of England. The capital city of England is London. Very good. And who can tell me why it's important for us to know about England and its capital, London? Molly? Because we're, we're fighting together with England in the war against Germany. Yes. Tim? And because it's being bombed by the Germans and lots of our soldiers are there including my brothers, Joe and Anthony. Someone very dear to me just shipped out as well, Tim. We're praying for the safe return of all of our soldiers, aren't we, class? Yes, yes Ms. Campbell. Wonderful. And a five, six, seven. Shuffle right, shuffle left, shuffle right, step, stamp. Shuffle right, shuffle right, shuffle left, stamp, stamp. Here come the toes. Listen to the music, climbing in a circle, clapping right. And back to your left, Molly. Double back there, Molly. Double back. That's right. That's right. Back to the right. Good. And the left. Back the other way. Here's the big finish. And... Um. <gasps> Thank you, Miss Campbell. And as for you, young ladies, I have only one word. Now, I know the Christmas extravaganza seems far away, but it'll be here before you know it. And we will be doing something very special for the finale. The number is to be titled Victory. And the lead will be danced by one of you as Miss Victory. <laughs> yes, Allison? Miss Victory would have to be the best dancer in the class, wouldn't she? Naturally. But if I may add something, Miss Lavanda, please. Being Miss Victory is about more than just dancing. Her duties will continue after the Christmas show as part of our school's war effort. She'll be performing at veterans' hospitals, war bond rallies, maybe even USO shows. So, young ladies, if you aspire to be Miss Victory, your work is cut out for you. I will be making my selection at the beginning of the new school year. <laughs> Go away from me. <laughs> so now that her fiance's been shipped out, I guess Miss Campbell won't get married until the war's over. Or maybe he'll come home on leave and we'll have the wedding then. That would be so romantic. I have big news. What? I'm gonna be Miss Victory. Um, I don't know how to put this, Molly, but... We're your best friends. And friends tell each other the truth. And the truth does that... I'm not good enough. If you know that, then how Well, can I'm you... not good enough now. 
But I will be. I have all summer. I'll tap dance till my shoes fall apart. I'll practice day and night, night and day. I thought you didn't like to practice. I hate to practice. <laughs> but you just said that you were going to practice day and night, night you and day. You see, I want to do something important for the war effort. You are Miss Campbell. Being Miss Victory isn't just about tap dancing. But you have to be really good at it. And Allison Hargate's been taking lessons since she was in diapers. Well, then I'll just have to make up for the last time. Hello, Molly. Good afternoon, Mrs. Gilford. Bye, Molly. Bye, Molly. Hello, girls. Good afternoon, Mrs. Mrs. Gilford. Hello, Marmalade. Next Saturday, I'm seeing Girl Crazy again so I can study the tap routines. Got a tap like Mickey and Judy if I'm gonna be Miss Victory. Once my girl makes up her mind, there's no stopping. Just like her dad. <laughs> oh! I almost forgot. Your birthday present. What is it? We'll open it and find out. <laughs> it's beautiful. You put anything you want inside this locket. I'll keep it forever and a day, thanks. Okay, folks, we've got a winner, and here they are. Congratulations. <laughs> Very good, Dick. Congratulations. Very good. <laughs> May I have this dance, Miss McIntyre? It would be my pleasure, Dr. McIntyre. <laughs> Come sit with me. Give your father a chance to catch his breath, Molly. I've kept your dinner warm. Another time, Molly, Molly. Now look, Canada, slow down a minute, if you will, please. You've only two... Mr. Moody owes me nine cigars. Well, it's got us worried, son. <laughs> Senator Glass is all broken up. Well, then you... <laughs> What's the matter with you two? Is something wrong? You sure are acting funny. Your father and I have some <clears throat> news for you. Hooray! Blackout drill! Just what we needed tonight. All right, Jill, close the curtains. Ricky, turn off the lights. Molly, get the candles. I'll get some extra blankets. I'll be right down. It's freezing. I wish we didn't have to have these blackouts. In case you haven't heard, we're at war. Yeah, we have to know what to do in case there's a Nazi attack on Jefferson. No one's going to attack us. The war's far away. Miss Campbell showed us on the map. Well, Ricky's right. It never hurts to be prepared. Exactly. And if you're more mature, you'd understand. Jill. So what was the news you had for us, Mom? Well, Jim, I think that you ought to be the one to tell the children. Now? Here? It's the perfect time and place. You're starting to make me nervous. What's going on? 
Quite a few of the younger doctors at the hospital are serving overseas. And their letters are very sobering. It's hard to read them without wanting to take action. What, what kind of action, Dad? Well, that's what, uh, that's what we want to discuss with you. Uh, thought about it for months, and your mother and I have talked it over. Dad, no! Let him finish, Mole! I've joined up. I'll be shipping out for England very soon. Gosh, that's swell! No, it isn't. It's horrible. See, all clear. We can go back up. I don't blame you for being upset, Molly, but I'm needed over there. You're needed here. Molly, your father and I have thought this through very carefully. That's why he's leaving his family? To go to some strange country that's being bombed for real? Molly, the people in this room mean more to me than anything in the world. But there are thousands of our young men over there who need doctors. I have to go. I'm awfully proud of you, Dad. I wish I could sign up with you. So I'm gonna hang a blue star in the window when you go. Well, lots of houses around here have them. That's something to be proud of. And the houses with gold stars? The soldiers who live there aren't ever coming back, so what's the use of being proud? I'm gonna be looking after patients, Molly. I won't be on the front lines. You don't have to be on the front lines to be hurt, or... I'm going upstairs. I wish everything could stay just the way it is right now. That's a hard wish to grant. But look at the North Star. It's steady. It's unchanging. You can always depend on it. No matter where we wander, there it is. I like that. You know something? You're my North Star. All of you. Because wherever I am, all I have to do is look up at the sky and think of my family right here waiting for me. That way I never feel lost. Promise you'll come home? Time to say so long. Good luck, Dad. Thank you, son. Take care of yourself, Dad. I will. Don't you worry. Remember the North Star, Molly. I will. Action. 
Our countrymen at home and abroad hope for swift victory. And victory is the word as our allies win a major battle in North Africa. The great Winston Churchill arrives to congratulate the soldiers who have liberated Tripoli from the fascists. You know that pretty pink sweater Miss Campbell had on yesterday? I saw one just like it in photo play. Golly, who is wearing it? Betty Grable. She's my favorite. I miss you so much. Tim, your word is helium. Helium. H-E-L-E-U-M. Helium. Sorry, Tim. <gasps> Molly? Helium. H-E-L-I-U-M. Correct. Yay! Keep working at home. We want to choose the best possible team to represent us. The winner of this year's Willow Street School Spelling Bee will come from this class and no other. It'll be you second year in a row. The undefeated champion. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Off to lunch you go. I wonder if she's writing a letter to Lieutenant Davies. Of course she is. I bet she writes them every day. My mom writes my brothers every day. Anthony got hurt. Gosh, is he all right? He's OK. It wasn't serious. Maybe my dad's looking after him at a field hospital. I hope so. Your dad's swell. He took out my tonsils and didn't hurt a bit. So how's that day and night, night and day tap dancing going? Well, I haven't exactly started. You better get going if you want to be Miss Victory. I need to ask my mom about extra lessons, but she's been looking really worried about stuff lately. Stuff? You know, bills and things. Dad used to take care of that, and now she has to. That's not a mom's job. Hey, why didn't you come in for a snack? It's Girl Cheese Day. Mom! We're home, I'm starving. M Mrs. Guilford. What are you doing here? Your mother asked me to come over and look after you girls for the afternoon. Oh. Well, I, I don't suppose she told you it was Girl Cheese Day. She did not. I've made you bologna sandwiches. My Johnny can never get enough of his mother's bologna sandwiches. Now, you girls go wash your hands and let me inspect them. And remind me to show you a picture of Johnny in his uniform. And then we have to look at an entire album of pictures of Johnny Guilford, starting from when he was a baby. There's nothing wrong with Mrs. Guilford being proud of her son. I never said there was, but I don't have to be. Something smells really good in the kitchen. I'm baking a casserole. No. It isn't for us, dear. My friend Doreen's brother was killed in France. I'm taking the casserole to their house. What difference will a casserole make? It's what you do to help a family in some small way during a dreadful time. Which reminds me, there's something that I'd like to discuss with all of you. I've taken a job. A job? You? Doing what? A nice vote of confidence for my children. But a real job? Oh, lots of women are taking jobs these days. With all the men away, we're needed to build planes and assemble war machinery. Assemble war machinery? You. Richard McIntyre, you may not know this, but before I was your mother, I could take an engine apart and put it back together faster than any one of my brothers. What job did you take, mother? Well, I had an opening at the Jefferson Aircraft Plant. I'm going to be working on the fighter assembly line. And if I hear one more thing, Ricky. Who? 
I, I don't want you to work, Mom. We need you here. Dad's not here and everything's upside down. It's not just us, Molly. Everything is upside down for everyone. Anyway, if you're working, who's gonna look after us? Well, I've asked your Aunt Eleanor to come and stay. Hooray, Aunt Eleanor! But before she can come, Mrs. Gilbert has agreed to take the job, which, quite frankly, is harder than assembling any planes. Not Mrs. Gilford. Why can't Aunt Eleanor come right away? Well, she can't just drop everything overnight, Molly. And besides, Mrs. Gilford is a lovely woman. She's raised a son all by herself, and she's very capable. But she makes bologna sandwiches, and all she talks about is Johnny. Molly, we are at war. Everybody has to do their part. So maybe yours is eating a few bologna sandwiches and listening to stories about Johnny Gilford. Is that really so bad? <sighs> Mother! Golly! You look so different from... You. I wasn't sure how to dress for the job, but I thought this would do for the first day. You look swell. Now listen, I know that this is brand new for all of us, so I can use all the support and cooperation I can get, especially from you, Molly. I'll be good. You promise to be nice to Mrs. Guilford? I'll try. I mean, I will. Oh, that's my carpool. Be good. Good luck. Good luck. <sighs> Thank you. Golly, she's really working. What's this orange stuff, Mrs. Guilford? Polite children do not refer to their food as stuff, Molly. The vegetable that you're lucky enough to have on your plates is mashed turnip grown in my victory garden. It's one of Johnny's favorites. And mine. You rat. Quite delightful, Mrs. Guilford. Molly, you haven't touched your food. Is there a reason for that? Yes, ma'am. What might that be? I don't like turnips. It smells like dirty sauce. Well, I'm sorry you feel like that. Because anyone who fails to finish her turnip will get no dessert. Nor will she be allowed to leave the table until the turnips are gone. Did you know that Johnny was first in his class his senior year? He was offered a scholarship at three different colleges. Really, Molly? You don't want to upset Mother when she gets home. When Dad was here, dinner was always fun. Life isn't about having fun, dear. Mr. Guilford passed away when Johnny was just 10. The boy went out and got himself a paper wrap. Do you think that was fun? Just hold your nose and swallow. You hold your nose. That'll be your mother. If I were you, I'd start eating. Thank you, Gladys. You're quite welcome, Helen. Enjoy your meal, dear. Molly, what on earth are you doing? How was work, Mom? It went well, dear, but you haven't answered my question. Well, I'm supposed to be here until I finish my turnips which means I'll be here until I die. Well, do you mind if I sit with you? Not until you die, of course, just while I have my tea. Sure. Well, maybe I should reheat these turnips while we're at it. It certainly can't be very tasty when they're cold. It won't help. I think that we can spare some of our butter and sugar rations. Mrs. Guilford's driving me crazy, Mom. Oh, well, she is, is she? She talks about Johnny all the time. Well, she misses him, just like you miss your dad. But I don't talk about dad all the time. Well, she's all alone and you're not. And you know, when you get home after school, you have a whole house full of people who love you waiting for you. When Mrs. Guilford got home just now, all she has waiting for her is her old cat. Here. Taste. It's good. You know, Molly, sometimes we have to do things, whether we like to or not, even when there's no one around to sweeten the taste.
Very nice, Molly. Miss Campbell, I know I'm not supposed to be here. Oh, well, it'll be our secret. <sighs> Thanks. I really need the extra practice. I want so much to be Miss Victory. You do? My dad really believes that I can do it. I don't want to disappoint him. He's in England. My fiance, Tom, is there too. <laughs> do you miss him an awful lot? Yes. I'm sure you know what that feels like. I guess he'll have a big wedding when he comes back. <laughs> <laughs> That's the plan. <sighs> Sometimes we... What? Uh, sometimes my friends and I, we imagine how splendid the wedding will be. Oh, yes. I've dreamed of a huge wedding since I was your age. I suppose most girls do. But as it's a morning of secrets, you want to know a secret, Molly? He has to miss Campbell. <laughs> All right. When you really love someone, it doesn't matter how splendid the wedding is. I'd marry Tom Davies on the front porch with the milkman as our only guest. <laughs> Golly. Now, you should get some extra practicing done. You should get working. You can't dance without music. Ready? Five, six, seven, eight. Baking a casserole. Who is it for? Mrs. Guilford. You don't mean. <sighs> yes, dear, I'm afraid I do. Johnny? Can I help, please? Mrs. Guilford. Thousands of you in this country have had to leave your homes and be separated from your fathers and mothers. My sister, Margaret Rose, and I feel so much for you, as we know from experience what it means to be away from those we love most of all. All of us children who are still at home think continually of our friends and relations who have gone overseas. We know that in the end, all will be well. Elizabeth Taylor looks just like Princess Elizabeth and sounds just like her. Do you think her accent is real or was she acting? <laughs> well, of course it's real. She's English. I read it all in photoplay. Everything in the movie is real, except for Lassie. Lassie? She's not a dog? Of course she's a dog. A boy dog. Oh. What's the snack today? Mom, we're home. The movie is so... Molly, this is Emily Bennett from London, England. London, England? Golly. Emily's going to be staying with us for a while. How do you do? Hi. Mrs. Shaw at the aircraft plant was going to take Emily in, but her son was injured overseas, and he's coming home. I said we'd be delighted to have her. How do you do? I'm Susan Shapiro. 
I don't think you have to curtsy. I'm Linda Rinaldi. It's a pleasure to meet you, Emily. Emily, dear, I'm going to help Jill get things ready for you upstairs. Just make yourself at home. Molly and the girls will take good care of you. Um, would you like some water? Do sit down, please. We just saw an English movie. England is very grand. Did you ever meet Princess Margaret Rose? Or Princess Elizabeth? <laughs> For Pete's sake, that's like asking if you met Eleanor Roosevelt. Let Emily answer. May I have that water now, please? Sure. The princesses? Well, I... Of course she has, but it's not polite to brag. Isn't that right, Emily? You see? Thank you. Could you say where you met them? That's not exactly bragging. At our home. Gosh, what were they doing there? My mom invited them to tea. Is your mother a duchess or maybe a countess? She's Lady Bennett. I think Emily's getting tired after Do you her. live in a castle? No. A manor. Bennett Manor. Bennett Manor? All set. We've moved Jill's things into my room so you and Molly can share. Share? My room? Yes, dear. Isn't that exciting? Yes. Very exciting. Now you girls go on home now. You'll see lots more of Emily at school. Lovely to meet you, Emily. It's been charming making your acquaintance, Ship. Molly, why don't you take Emily upstairs? Show her around her new room. This is it. That'll be your bed. Thank you. Is that all you have? Yes. My trunk was lost on the boat. There's room in the closet and the dresser for you. Jill took out most of her stuff. Thank you. I guess you're used to a bigger room at Bennett Manor and butlers and everything. Reading too. What's the book? Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. He's my favorite author. Have you read any Nancy Drew mysteries? No. I like your dog. Thank you. Does he have a name? King. Like the King of England? No. Oh. Well, I have some things to do. If you'd like to freshen up, it's just down the hall. Why can't I share mom's room and you stay in there with Emily? That's the most ridiculous idea I ever heard. You two are exactly the same age. I'm sure you'll have a million things in common. We have nothing in common. She's stuck up and she's used to servants and fancy clothes and tea parties with the princesses. Why is she here anyway? In case you haven't been reading the papers, there's a war going on where she lives. Yeah, and our dad's over there. Nothing is the way it should be. He should be here and that Emily girl should be back there. Honestly, Molly, you are so immature. 
Why? Because I want my dad back home and I don't want to share my room with a total stranger. I'm sure that Emily would rather not be here either. If dad were here, none of this would have happened. He would have insisted on taking her in and you know it. Time for dinner, girls. Emily, dinner's ready. I saw a newsreel at the movies of a whole building exploding in London. Was your house ever bombed? Ricky, let Emily eat. She's all done, Mom. Have you ever seen any German planes? Because I have a couple that are exact replicas of... Rick! Our dad's in London. He's in the army. He's a doctor. I'm rather tired. May I leave the table? Yes, of course, dear. wrong with her it's not her it's you she came here all by herself she's away from her family in a strange country the last thing she wants to talk about is exploding buildings sorry it doesn't matter what we talk about she hates us she hasn't smiled once we'll give her some time she's been around more since she was five years old it may take her a little while to learn how to smile now i'm sure you're going to make our new student Emily Bennett, who's come all the way from London, feel welcome. Oh, thank you, Anthony. Now, let's have our final spell off before I make my choices for this year's Spelling Bee team. Take your places. Girls on one side, boys on the other. Emily, would you like to participate? Yes, please. Wow, you sure are a swell speller, Emily. Thank you. Proper spelling and grammar are considered terribly important back home. Linda says you know Princess Elizabeth. And Princess Margaret Rose. Do you really know the princesses? Yes. They have tea at her house. It was only once. <laughs> Look, there's Miss Campbell. I think she has the list for the spelling bee. You'll have to come over to my house, Emily. We could arrange a little tea party for you. Yes, that looks like the list. I'm sure you're all eager to hear who's representing our class. We sure are. Our spellers will be Molly McIntyre, Allison Hargate, Tim Rutledge, Howie Munson, and Emily Bennett. Emily? Me? Emily is an excellent speller. We're very lucky to have her on our team. F-E-I-G-N. Hippopotamus. H-I-P-O... You left out P. Hippopotamus. H-I-P-P-O-P-O-T-A-M-U-S. Would you like me to help you? No, thanks. Aren't you going to study? It's not necessary. Oh, really? Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great honor as principal to welcome you all to our annual end of term spelling bee. The best spellers in each class have been chosen to compete for this year's beautiful ribbon. <laughs> the words have been drawn up by our august panel of judges, Miss Littlefield, Mrs. Taft, Miss Campbell. So, without further ado, good luck all. Let's begin. Jane, your word is camouflage. Camouflage. C A M O F L A G E. Sorry, Jane. Jimmy, your word is lucent. Lucent. 
L U. Can you repeat that, please? Lucent. L U S S E N T. I'm sorry. Moat. That is spelled M O T T E. Incorrect. Sensor. C E N S U R. Sorry, Dwight. We are down to our last two spellers, Miss Molly McIntyre and our new student from London, England, Miss Emily Bennett. Let's hear a hearty round of applause for all our participants. Emily, your word is maneuver. Maneuver. M A N O E U V R E. I'm so sorry, dear. Maneuver. M A N E U V E R. Uh, just a moment. Attention, I'm afraid we've made an error. My fellow judges have pointed out that Emily just gave us the correct alternate British spelling of maneuver. As Emily was correct, Molly, your word is mnemonic. Mnemonic. Could you please use that in a sentence? Certainly. The students used a mnemonic to remember the names of the Great Lakes. Mnemonic. That would be M N. Can I say that again, please? Go ahead. M N E. Um. unforeseen circumstances, uh, we are going to interrupt this contest. Congratulations to our final two. You'll both receive a ribbon. Assembly dismissed. It was so kind of you to help me out, Helen. And you have such a lovely home. Thank you. Emily must be pleased to be here. We're doing our best to make her feel welcome. And this is my daughter, Molly. Molly, this is my friend, Mrs. Shaw, from the aircraft plant. She was the lady that was going to take Emily in. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Shaw. That's very nice to meet you, dear. And where's Emily? She's at the library. Are you getting on well? I guess so. Molly, that's not very enthusiastic. What's gotten into you? Well, this isn't the palace she's used to. Alice? It isn't Bennett Manor. We don't have butlers and maids. I'm not quite sure I understand what you're talking about, dear. Where Emily lives. Emily lives in a little apartment above a sweet shop. Or she did before it was bombed. Her parents aren't Lord and Lady Bennett? Her father was a bus driver before he enlisted. And I'm sorry to say, her mother was killed last year when their home was hit. Molly, where in the world did these stories come from? I... I just assumed, you know, because she's from England and I thought maybe... No, dear, your guest is just an ordinary girl. And your home is probably closer to a palace than anywhere she's ever lived. Six, seven, eight, Charleston. Step front, step kick behind. Point your toes. Go down for the knees. Four, five, six. Push three, four, and sway. Flap heels next. 
summer to hone your tapping skills and remember your goal. Miss Victory. That's dismissed. Oh, Miss Victory. Molly, do you think Emily would come to my house for IT? How should I know? It's much more like what she's used to. We have a maid and a cook. For your information, I'm sure she'd have a swell time. Allison. London remains a magnificent city, and the English people are courageous and kind. The field hospital is understaffed, so I'm doctor, nurse, and orderly most days. I miss my little family more than I can say. Each night, I look up at the stars. I'll get the blanket. Head to the basement, everyone. Come on, Emily, hurry up. It'll be over soon, really. The worst part is sitting in the dark. Waiting. We had to do this almost every night. You'd hear an awful noise. A split second of silence. Then the explosion. If you're outside when the siren went off, You'd have to make a dash for the tube station. We'd sleep there all night. Hundreds of us. Crowded together. Cold. Dirty, hungry even. That sounds terrifying. You'd come out in the morning and... a house you walked past every day. Maybe even your own. It would be nothing but a pile of bricks. Let's see all clear. We can go up now, see? We're safe. We're never safe. No! 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 It's... <laughs> Emily. No, no. Help. Help. Emily. Emily. You were having a bad dream. I'm sorry I woke you. That's okay. What were you dreaming about? Nothing. Nothing at all. Good night. Great expectations from the library. I'm really enjoying it. My favorite Dickens is a Christmas carol. Every Christmas, Mom and Dad and I would sit around the tree and read it aloud. That sounds nice. I had a beautiful edition of the book. The illustrations were just magical. Why didn't you bring it with you? It burned. The bombing. I'm... I'm sorry for everything that happened to you, Emily. Thank you, Molly. I think you're the bravest person I know. Next to my dad. Your dad sounds like a fine man. You must miss him terribly. I do. I miss my dad too. And my mom. Molly? Yes? I have to tell you something. What? I 
don't live in Bennett Manor. We lived in a flat above a shop. My dad drives the bus and my mom. You don't have to. Let me finish, please. My mom. She wasn't Lady Bennett. She was the best mom in the world, but she wasn't a royal. And she's. She's dead. Oh, well, Emily. I wasn't planning to tell lies, Molly. It just happened. I was so afraid that you and your friends wouldn't like me. Come on. It's warm in here. You don't hate me? I could never hate you, Emily. And as far as I'm concerned, you are a princess. Oh my. Good night, Emily. with wings. At Avenger Field in Sweetwater, Texas, famous flyer Jacqueline Cochran gives her ferry pilot students a last minute inspection. Then it's off by plane for graduation ceremonies. Goodbye, daughter, I'm working for the Army now. And any gal between 21 and 34 with flying in her blood and 35 hours in her logbook can take the training. Ellington Field, Houston, Texas. And from Miss Cochran and Major General Grant... Jimmy Cagney sure can dance. I have to bring Aunt Eleanor to see this. Your Aunt Eleanor is swell. When she arrives in this afternoon, I'm counting the minutes. <laughs> Last time her aunt was here, she took us up in a plane. Goodness. That she drove herself. Piloted, not drove. Hey, it's the last weekend of our summer holidays. Let's do something fun. We could have a picnic. I thought we were going roller skating. I have a great idea. I haven't exactly got it all down, but I'm getting there. Now can we go roller skating? That's it? That's all you have to say? I've been working really hard. Oh, it shows. You've improved a lot. I enjoyed it immensely. There, you see? Let's go. You go on without me. I want to get things ready for Aunt Eleanor. Pacing like that is not going to get your aunt here any sooner. Mrs. Guilford, mm -hmm. did I ever tell you that Aunt Eleanor taught me how to steer a sailboat when I was five? She can do anything. I suppose it'll be quite a relief to have her here instead of boring old me. No. I've actually really enjoyed having you around, Mrs. Guilford. She's here! What's up, Doc? Not much, Dutch. <laughs> I have so many things planned out for us to do, and I can hardly wait till you meet Emily. She's from London. Whoa, and... slow down, Dutch. Hey, how come you only have one suitcase? You're staying till Christmas. How about I take my favorite niece out for a soda? I've been really looking forward to spending time with you, Dutch. Me too. But I can't stay. Why not? I'm on my way to Texas. 
<laughs> Texas? What for? I'm reporting for flight training. I've joined the Women's Air Force Service Pilots. You what? Oh, it's a great honor to be accepted. 25,000 female pilots applied and only one in 25 were chosen. There you are. I was worried about you. I've been sitting here thinking. I'm sorry. So am I. For letting you down. It wasn't an easy decision. And I know you're counting on me, but I can do so much more to help this way. Because they need the best. You and Dad. You're both the best at what you do. Well, he's my big brother. It runs in the family. Like modesty. <laughs> <laughs> I wish there was something I was best at. Well, you have lots of time to find out what that is. But for now, you are the very best Molly you could ever be. And Eleanor? Yes, Dutch? I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Your Aunt Eleanor loves adventure. It's more than that, Mom. She's doing what she has to do. Well, she is, is she? Yes. You see, there's a whole lot at stake here. And we can't afford to stand by and hope the other guy will take care of things. We have to go out there and do it. It's not easy here, and sometimes my spirits are low. But then I see some of the wounded soldiers around me, young men whose lives have been forever altered, and I'm humbled by their courage. I know my little family is doing their part to make this war end quickly so every soldier can follow his North Star home. I didn't think grade four would be this hard. If we had Miss Campbell, it wouldn't be. She made everything fun. Miss Littlefield gives too much homework, and she looks like she's sucking on lemons. <laughs> working very hard. Choosing Miss Victory will be a very difficult task, so I need a little time to think and confer. The name of our Miss Victory will be posted outside Principal Stevens' office, along with the rehearsal schedule. Class dismissed. She should have been here ages ago. It's an important decision. She has to take her time. Here she comes! Here she Why aren't you at work? 
Your father went out into the street after a bombing raid to help the wounded. They haven't found him yet. Don't worry, Molly. They'll find him. You'll see. They'll find you, Dad. I know they will. Miss Campbell! How nice to see you, Molly. I hear that you have been chosen to dance Miss Victory. That's a wonderful achievement. I'm considering quitting the show. I just can't think about dancing right now. They haven't found my father yet. You once told me that your dad really believed that you could be Miss Victory and that you didn't want to disappoint him, remember? Yes. Well then, do you think he'd want you to quit? No. Of course he wouldn't. Just like Tom wouldn't want me to stop doing what I love. To be with my class, to be making music. We have to do them proud, don't we? Yes. <laughs> and visit as often as you like. I know Miss Littlefield's your teacher this year, but my door is always open. I'll come. Good. You and your family are in my prayers. Thank you. Mother? We regret to inform you that Dr. James McIntyre has officially been classified as missing in action. Please await further word. can't remember his name. My schoolmate, Andrew, was missing for a long time before they finally located him. Please, don't lose hope. Doctors and nurses are caring for those who risk their lives for us. But as the fight for freedom takes its toll, help from the home front is needed more than ever. As you go safely about your lives, think about those men and ask yourself, what can I do to help? Come on, we can't just sit here. We have to do something. We do? This is your call to action. Right now? Your chance what? to lend a hand. Come on, girls. Take part in a war bond rally in your city or town and raise money for the war effort. Collect all the scrap metal you can find to help make those tanks and weapons. Go to your local Red Cross Center and volunteer to assemble care packages for the boys overseas. Ask neighbors to contribute blankets. Old clothing that can be mended for the people who need it most. 
grow bandages for the wounded. Though they're far from home, we need to show them they're never far from our hearts. Gladys, Molly. Evening, Helen. We kept your dinner warm. Oh, thank you, dear, but I'm not hungry. You should tuck yourself into bed with a hot water bottle. Oh, that sounds so inviting. But I haven't even begun to decorate for Christmas. I have to get a few things down from the attic. Tomorrow we'll go look for a Christmas tree, though I doubt there'll be anything nice left. Uh, we don't need a tree this year. Oh, Molly McIntyre. If your father heard you say that. Good night, then. Good night, Gladys. I'm just gonna change and then we'll go look for a ladder and... How on earth? We pulled our money and bought a tree. I got the ornaments out of the attic. It was old Molly's idea. Thank you, Molly. All of you, come here. Oh. <laughs> I'll get it. Telegram from Mrs. Helen McIntyre. Thank you. Mother, would you like me to open it? No, dear. here. What I wanted more than anything in the world was to be back home. I'll tell you a secret. <laughs> That's what I wanted, too. I thought you were spoiled. I thought you were stuck up. <laughs> oh, we won't be a pair. <laughs> I feel safe here. I'm glad, Emily. Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, and the hopes of St. Nicholas soon would be there.
Congratulations, Emily. You were superb. Thank you. Where's our Miss Victory? I don't know. I saw her last after we took our vows. Mother. <sighs> James. This is the best Christmas present I ever had. I couldn't agree more, Molly. But I did bring back a few things for you kids. Really? Now, they're not wrapped, but... Uh... Oh, that's OK, Dad. Let's see them. <laughs> Helen, could I get my knapsack, please? Yes, Dad. <sighs> All right, let's see now. Second, for Ricky, a genuine Royal Air Force insignia. Swell! I can wear it on my jacket. And a silk scarf from Paris for Jill. Oh, Dad, it's so elegant. <laughs> <laughs> and for Molly, she's just what I wanted. And for Emily. Me? You brought back a present for me, Dr. McIntyre? Well, of course. Molly wrote me all about you. You're a member of the family now. Thank you ever so much. Ah, uh, here it is. A Christmas carol. Open it. It's inscribed. Oh, my. What is it? Dearest Em, it warms my heart to know that you're with such fine people. Merry Christmas, sweet girl. God willing, we'll be together soon. Your loving dad. But how did you find him? When we McIntyres make up our minds, there's no stopping us. Read to us, Emily, like you used to at home. We'll do it together. My mom's favorite part was the very end of the story. And it was always said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well, if any man alive possessed the knowledge. May that be truly said of us and all of us. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us, everyone. <laughs>